ready to go ahead and bring it in today? Yeah, I think I th I think so. I think we're yeah. Feeling good? For ready to do this? I th I'm, I'm excited. feeling good. I'm feeling ready. Let's do it. I am excited. Even though, let me just go ahead and bring it in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What's really good, pastors? Welcome to another episode of Love, War, Challenges. I am MTV Malik. He is Tyler Louder. What's really good? Gang, 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 gang. Now, a lot of interesting stuff about this episode, but I do feel like a lot of stuff on the episode may not have been that exciting to talk about. Like, especially with the uh, the elimination and the daily or the challenge that they were doing today, it's hard to talk about trivia. Yeah, it is hard to talk about trivia. It's hard to get amped up for trivia and everything. Um, uh, it always brings its fun moments, kind of. This was... Oh, I love the way they flung them off. Love the way was... they did it. Look kind of like, awkward though. I didn't see TJ like laughing or anything. I feel like I know that they want these guys when they they fall to just be like it's unnatural and everything. But I kind of wish they would be like, hey, this is gonna pull you backwards. Tuck when you go. Like yeah, just, just tuck. Like tell them that. Like hey, it's gonna drop you straight down. Stay as stiff as you can and go straight in like a pencil. Like yeah, tell them those they just thrown things. Out and they like went inverted. And I don't know. I didn't like that. But well, we see, like, yeah. Ryan. Ryan's trying to fall, and as he's falling, he gets flipped, and his arm is out. And so he's landing. His arm's getting pushed back into his shoulder. Like, I mean, if you don't want people to get sent home for injuries, like, I get the fun aspect of it, but it's like, hey, talk. That's all they got to do, and it would have better. Um, also, TJ wasn't very entertaining in this as much as he normally is for trivia. Just I me. would agree, but I'm going to go ahead and back it up. <laughs> and... Uh, Go ahead and get it started off. So, of course, we got the previous winners bring it in. I thought Steve and Nicole did a really great job. But Veronica said something in the beginning of A Black. She said, like, you know, I talked my way out of going into elimination, and I was able to get, um, you know, able to get myself saved. And she just says, in doing so, she kind of creates a relationship with Nicole that's going to benefit her and Tina in the long run. And in my head, I'm thinking, I'm just like, but did you, though? I'm like, yeah, she didn't vote you in, but I don't know. Uh, how much weight do you give Veronica's statement that Nicole is going to be able to help her more in the future or be more willing to help her in the future now that they kind of had this incident, you know, under them? I mean, it's more so of, like, I don't even know, because, like, Veronica really didn't even give her anything. I mean, Nicole just made a bad choice at first and then fixed her bad choice. That's what Nicole did. Like, she probably still would have beat V, if we're being honest, but we don't know. Um, I, I, I like, Veronica really didn't give her anything outside of kind of saying, like, yeah, like, you know, you got me as a number and everything. So I think, for lack of better words and everything, I think Nicole is very easily manipulated gameplay-wise um and so i think somebody like veronica who we end up finding out i didn't know this you know is a berkeley graduate and everything did not know that either did not know that um not because like i didn't think she could be just you know these are things they don't tell you about people um and uh yeah i mean for veronica it's a huge move it's a benefit because i think nicole can be manipulated into well veronica's got my back veronica's not gonna say my name we're good to go there so i think that's kind of how that will that'll play out yeah, I, I do think Veronica may see that. I don't think Nicole has any intentions on upholding that. Veronica, unfortunately, without Rachel, Veronica offers very little. Both Veronica and Tina. I mean, a number when they it comes to voting. They offer a vote. They and offer a vote. That's a, yeah. I don't think Nicole and her alliance are in that many needs of a vote. I mean, there really aren't too many, you know, there's no tower ring alliance that has taken place it's small little cliques of people who know each other who's working together but you know no big and i think that that's what this season is missing a big over you know a big powerful allyship between multiple competitors we really don't have that you got cam kind of enforcing a will and people going with it just because they don't yeah. want to be a target but we don't really have that big alliance so i don't yeah, think it's gonna um, help as much as she hopes but because of that, there is no, um, it, we're not following um, a linear path for the challenge. 
um, which is some of the problems when you have these like big groups is you're just like, oh, okay, you're next, you're next, you're next, you're next. And I'm not going to lie, almost every elimination um, for the people that go in and who goes home and who wins, it, it's pretty, it feels pretty random to me based on how I would play the game based on the people I see there. Obviously, I have no relationships with anybody. Um, I've only ever spoke to one of them. Um, but it, realistically, when I look at the gameplay, I would... Those are not all the people that are getting sent in are who I would send in every time. So, um, but the thing with Veronica and Nicole, the big thing to, to know here is that um, Nicole is very, um, this has nothing to do with her actual vision of needing glasses, but she's very nearsighted where like she only sees one issue in front of her and that's Kara. Like she just sees like, I want Kara out and she can't see that there's other layers to this thing, you know? <laughs> that's like, wild to me because there's a lot of people in that house who can beat her in a final. Oh, like, Nicole. Yeah, I I would say I would say probably she's maybe eighth. I think right now, if I was like ranking everybody based on that performance in a final, I think I'd probably put her at like eighth best. Because um, she's never she's never been able to do anything in a final. She struggled on her first one of Vision of Champions because she can't do puzzles at all. Um, and then she hurt her ankle a little bit and didn't want to push through because of her job and just gave up at the slightest injury, um, which they never touched on at the reunion or anything after that <laughs> because it wasn't significant. So um, I just, I don't think that she has what it takes to do a long distance drive thing. When you look at people like Kara and Laurel and um, Adam, I would say is up there. Um, I think Derek would do really well in a final. Um, Jay would do really well in a final, like, I, you know, Leroy and Cam, I think, even could do better in finals um, as well. Especially from what we've been able to see from them. Uh, yeah. Moving on, I don't want to touch on this too much, but it was, I want to give a big shout out to Ryan Sobriety. Um, mm -hmm. And I was happy because later on in the episode, he says that the house made it real easy for him. And, I, you know, I, I want to commend them. I, you know, I say multiple times, I don't need my challengers to be decent people or, or good human beings. It kind of works better if they're not sometimes. So yeah. to see that and to see this uh, humanizing effect, I think All Stars has been doing really, really great at that, even better than the flagship. And like they go to club night all the time. And I think it's just because, um, no disrespect to the main mainline show or whatever, if you want to call it and everything, um, these are mature people. These are mature adults. Like they still get a little heated and everything, but they're like, oh, outside of this game, you're a real person dealing with this. So I support you. Um, and so I think that's, I think it's awesome. Um, and we even see like Laurel, like saying that she wants him to stay because they, he wants, she wants him to keep persevering in this environment even more. Yes, sorry, try to do my phone. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to today's daily. Today's daily is going to be called Trivia. Uh, and it's, it's the name of it is Face Effects, but you know, it's just Trivia. I don't even know why they bother the name. The name of Trivia. So this one works. The first eight people to drop are going to be in a losing group. And then there's a second round. Uh, there's going to be a winner of that second round. And whoever loses out of that second round is going to be the middle group. Now, normally I do like trivia. Trivia is fun and whatever. I love the way that they flung people off, even though it was, you know, it, it was a great, it was great to look at, but it did look like maybe this isn't the best way to fling somebody off so they land neck first, so... Um, and really, that's the only positive stuff I have to say about this uh, uh, interview, um, this round of trivia. I did not like the questions. They yeah, asked um, South way too African much questions. weird spelling. Way too much weird spelling. <coughs> Sorry about that, Mike. Oh, my computer was not plugged in. And okay, now it's fixed. Yay. Uh yeah. But so you say way yeah, too many, like, too like many ways of spelling. And it wasn't consistent. Cause somebody just like spelled this thing in Iceland that has way too many J's and K's in it than it should. And then like it yeah. gives us a mission. It wasn't consistent because then also like some people have they were like, hey, what color was the stars from the very first elimination? You know, which is like two weeks ago and then the next person gets hey who was just sent into elimination yesterday it's like what are we what are we doing here to be fair 
I think using details of challenges is a very good thing to use, but using like names that are very common, like you have a one in, you know, five chance of getting it. Um, I, I think what they should do is all stars trivia should be based on last all star season and like do things like that. Like see who is paying attention, you know? And, yes. And, and, and I, I like that, cool. especially saying like, Oh, who faced this person or what was the name of this elimination? I think that's fine. How many stairs it was walking up? I think that's come on. Who's paying attention to that? Um, well, I think yeah, it goes to the best. You, like you're just running man or something. To get wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I didn't like those questions. Um, the South African questions I thought was pretty okay, but we don't know how much forewarning they gave them before that. Like, yeah. uh, just, come on, the the state am- animal or how many official languages? That's fine. I think if they would have gave them something in the beginning, like, oh, here goes some facts about, you know, South Africa, where you stand, which they may have done. We don't know. But I, it just... I think I think they should incorporate... I, I like the incorporation of the house, kind of, of, like, what color are the things? Sure, that's fine. But I think if you're going to put, like, like th- they're in Cape Town, South Africa, you're inside the house, there should be a random fact, like, in every room of the house on the wall. And everybody's just like, why is this here? And then you can see, like, who's paying attention to their surroundings. And I think that's how you could that's evolve great. it. I also think another way, like, if you're going to ask questions about challengers, what you should do is you should ask about challengers' history, but it's like the four teams that are up there are getting questions about the four that are on the bottom, and then vice versa. Like, you know, like, how it, many times how many times has Laurel and Kara faced off an elimination? You know? Th- those are perfect questions. It really struck me as, like, is anybody really paying attention to these? Like, you know, it, it, it seemed like it seemed a little thrown together. So I wasn't a huge fan of that. I wasn't a huge fan of how people fell off. Uh, anything else you loved or hated about today's daily face the facts? What I did love is that it was a you game only. It wasn't you got it right. Give somebody an X. It was like, once you get three wrong, you lose. Like yeah, I liked that aspect of it. Cause I don't like when it's like, well, you can, like, uh, Dirty 30. They're like, all right, well, if you get it right, you can give somebody else an X. And it's like, okay, well, three people in a row just gave one person an X. They didn't even get to answer a question. It's like, what's the, <laughs> that's not a game. Who are you challenging? So I, I, I like this aspect. I like how it kind of went back and forth like a snake draft. Um, Yeah, I mean, overall, it was a good little trivia thing. And, um, but yeah, it's flinging these guys like this in All-Stars, they're old. It's, it's. Like this, this might have broke like Kifla. You know, if his leg was bad, he landed wrong. Like, yeah, the, to me, it wasn't just a whole bunch of love. I mean, the flings was nice, but I would have been fine if they were doing it back first. You know, uh, just I just didn't love this one. I use I use Dirty Thirty as an example. I think that's one of the best ones because what they did is they hooked him on a harness, and then the harness had him like lean back. So yeah. Once so once the harness was gone, they were going backwards, and people could do backflips. Some people just fell straight down. Like nobody was landing sideways. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then they showed um, they showed that clip of like Jay's like, you know, I'm defending my title from eight years ago. And then they showed <laughs> I forget who it was like getting flung. But when they flung him out of those things, it was not pretty on X's too. You know what? A catapult. I, I like the lean back. I like the catapult thing. Those are all great. Uh, I, th- I think this is a great chance for a catapult. Put them on land and have a catapult fling them really high into the ocean. I think that would have been great. It just seemed right. it just seemed low energy, low effort for this one. And like you said, we didn't see TJ crackling and stuff like he usually does during trivia. And that kind of, you know, and that's that's kind of a tell on how this one goes. But no surprise, Brad and Flora are the, are the first ones flung. And surprisingly, Lee and Veronica gets to win and they go back in the house they have this oven baked pizza which is great and they're cheering each other and they're going back and forth and i started thinking i was just like it's crazy because up until now you know i it's funny because when was it i think it was like when did uh veronica um throw lee in for no reason this dirty 30 it was dirty 30 30. and so i'm just like oh look at him they're all friendly and stuff let them get together it's just like it's, it's like she never got him thrown into elimination for no reason at all um and I, I thought that was real great. We got to find out a little bit more about Veronica. Everybody was able to cheer everybody on. I thought Leroy was hilarious during that whole scene. And then we get to the scene where Ace tells the story. I thought this and was great. I thought it was, if I was in the house, I would have loved this. Like ama- Amazing. 
I thought it was amazing that he did it, and he did it in such a funny way. Right. And I love the fact that Brad seen exactly what he was doing, and he got really butthurt in, in his feelings about it. Rightfully so. He was just like, yeah, he did a sales pitch for th- <laughs> for throwing me me and and uh, Adam in. He's like, and that's all it was, and I'm pissed about that. And I think he has, a, I think he hit it right on the head. I think two things can be true. I think Ace was extremely funny and charming, and the story was great. I thought it was good for the house, and I think Brad has a right to be pissed because he just said, "Hey, throw these two motherfuckers in." I don't think Ace was like Ace said he wasn't doing it maliciously. I I believe him. Like I feel like Ace is like a he's like a good down to earth type dude, and I think he looked at it as like like. In his speech, he's also saying, you're not going to steal Steve's star when we put you in. You're going to take my star from me. Like, so he's he's saying that. Like, if he was trying to make like a super sales pitch, he's like, when you guys go in, instead of taking my star because you guys love me so much, you're going to take his. Like, no, he's like, I'm going to hold the star for you until you win. And then you guys get to take it. So that's definitely going to come up later on. In fact, no, we can talk about it now. A lot of people don't appreciate Ace's attitude towards the star. I think, you know, you. I hear Derek make a comment, smart. just like, and I was thinking the same thing. I was just like, he's confident in himself that he can get a star more later towards the game. He could take a lot of pressure off of himself by kind of just getting rid of his star. And I think that's people what he's like going for. Ace. Because he's people like very likable. They're gonna give him more. They're gonna. He's gonna get another star. He's probably not gonna have to go into elimination. Like, and everybody's like, "Well, I can give it to Ace because if he loses it, he's not gonna get mad. He won't get mad at me if I take it. He's not gonna get mad if I give it to him and put a target on him. He's not gonna get mad." So Ace, he's playing the game smart. This is a smart move, I think. Because look at look at the difference in games between Ace and let's just say Kara right now. Kara, every episode is freaking out and panicking of like, I've got to vote. I've got to win. I can't let blah, blah, blah get in. I got to make sure they go in just to make sure she's good. Ace is doing whatever happens works. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, and, and right now they're in the same position. They're both on the show. They're both still in the season. Um, yeah. yeah so, Ace is just like, yeah, you know, I'm chill. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's smart. I think, be, he's so low key with it that he just knows like, why am I freaking? Why would you freak out about this? Either I'm gonna get a star or I'm gonna get sent home. Like that's how that's how the show goes, and I know that. And I think he's just playing everybody. I, th- I forget who said it, but they're like, somebody said that they didn't like how. Oh, I think it was Flora. Right. Flora's like, well, no, no. Flora said she didn't like how Ace is like. He's playing a harder game than everybody thinks, and he's trying to be nice to everybody. No, I think he's just actually nice with everybody. And it's doing well for him. He's nobody's target. No, and, and trust me, he's dealt with that enough for people wanting to get him out and get him out early. Man, when, when was the last time Ace has been in a game for this long? Man, he's just... Gauntlet, Gauntlet 3 was the last time. That's it. Yeah, let that man live. Uh, before we get into nominations, uh, we get Adam, wants to offer himself up. Hey, I want to go in there, get a star, vote me in. Totally fine. Everybody can get that. A lot of people are worried about Tina. They say, oh, you know, she might be wishy-washy. She did say Rachel's name. And to me, that doesn't sit right. That vote yeah. that vote was already held. I don't think it should be, you know, that vote was already determined. It didn't matter who she voted on. Her just saying Rachel's name just means she didn't have to burn it or make an extra enemy on somebody else. And I'm totally fine with that. I don't get why everybody's mm-hmm. taking it so, per- and, I mean, is she wishy-washy? Yeah, probably. But not for the reason that they're telling me. So that doesn't really sit right with me. I it, it has been done forever that people will just vote with the majority instead of getting a random enemy for no reason. There's there's no reason to put an extra target on your back at all. And if it sends your friend in, then yeah, it's kind of shitty in like the the t- sense of like you voted me in. But I mean, if you're truly friends with somebody, you want them to have the best game going forward with or without you. That's what a friend is. Like, you want them to have the best setup for an elimination, the best setup for a final to run with you. You don't want them to get set home. So it's like, it's like if you have to say my name because I'm already going in, then do it. Like, do it. Don't burn a vote on somebody else and piss them off, and then next week they send you in. 100%. Now, moving on to nominations, I do appreciate what the challenge try to do. They try to make these nominations, you know, really dramatic and all this and the other. And to be honest, it just wasn't. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of surprises. Uh, it's going to be Brad versus Adam. 
I think Brad thought he had a little bit more goodwill going in. I don't think Brad really understood that his poor performance was going to affect him when it came down to voting. Because even the people who he counted on saying, you know, saving him was just like, well, when it's all said and done, if I have to go into, you know, a do a daily tomorrow, do I really want Brad who's been struggling, who everybody keeps saying is um uh is distracted, which really begs the question. I mean, of course he has stuff going on back home and stuff that he's dealing with. Um, but the show didn't really get into it. So we don't really know that. Knowing Brad, I mean, you know, we all know that he's dealing with, you know, some stuff and, you know, stuff with the ex and, and the kids and all that. But they don't go into any of that on the show. So it just seems like he kind of sucks. But I think everybody in the house realizes, like, hey, he got some stuff going on. His head's not all the way in here. I think they feel like they're doing him a favor by putting him in a position to go home. Like, hey, maybe you should go home and get that handled. I don't know. That's just or, my take. Or, or, or he wins the elimination and gets his mojo back. Like, it is a win-win in that situation. Mm. It's like, yo, man, this isn't for you. Like, it's just this isn't your season. And everybody goes through these where they just can't win dailies. They're always at the bottom. Like, this happens. A lot challenge of challenge slump. greats. Have, yeah, there's slumps all over where it's just like you can't win. A, and, but he won a daily. He won the first daily. He was the best performer hey, for the male wrong. side. Yeah. And I just think not everything's tailor fitted to him. Like, I think, you know, some of these, like, reaction, quick think things, they're just not his game. But something that's like, hey, you've got to get from point A to point B – that's his game. He can do those dailies. So, I mean, Brad's never been a world beater for dailies, to be honest. I think he was just a uh, representation of older times um, where people just, he's a consistent face. So people assume that means he's always good, but his Brad's never been a... I think his yeah. performance has always been consistent. But you always yeah. count on him getting bounced out somewhere between uh, the middle to the 80% part of the challenge. It's usually his, his exit area. Most times. His, most of his daily performances throughout his career have always just been, yeah, he's, he's pretty good. He's good. Yeah. Like he's never, he's never the guy on the team. He's the second in command, the role player for teams, for individual stuff. He does relatively well, but um, yeah. So it's not like a surprise for me. I don't think he's a bad competitor. I'm not saying that. I, don't think so I, just, either. I just don't think like he just hit a slump and that's all it was. Um, It was a surprise that he was so upset about going in because everybody was saying like, Steve's not going in. He's already done Which two of these. I think it's fair. Yeah, Just but then everybody looks at it and they go, and then Derek points out, he goes, Ryan's hurt right now. Like, how is that fair? Like, if Ryan's, like, not 100%, why are we sending him to the slaughter? And I actually agree with that when you're in All-Stars. Like, other seasons, it's like, if that's mm -hmm. your enemy, throw him in. Who, who cares? Right. Let him go home. But, yeah, I remember it was a thing. You don't even mention if you're injured because people will see that as a weakness and you can target. expect to be going into elimination. But for me, like, I'm on All-Stars. I'm like, you know what? I don't want you to lose when you're not at your 100%. I don't think that is a fair opportunity to earn your star. So I want you at your best when I beat you. And I think that's how, the, I mean, I thought it was a respect thing. And I thought it was the right decision that who to put in 100%. And I, even Adam said, he's like, I wish Brad would just be like me and just, like, want to go into an earnest star. I'm okay with these two going in. I'm a little bit mixed on Ryan. Of course, you don't want to throw, you know, of course, it's bad uh, sportsmanship to throw somebody in injured or throw them to the Wolves injured. I don't think he should get a pass because he's injured. But also at the same time, I think he's cultivated enough good relationships where those people would be like, well, we're not going to put you in because we know you're injured. I mean, uh, this and, is how he plays the game. He's always played the game like this. He's always been like, I don't want to go in. It's fine. Just leave me to the end. Like... That's how he plays this game. And what happens is Ryan ends up going against really good competitors and gets sent home. I mean, he got sent home by, um, let's see, who, who sent him home? He lost to, was it Jen and Noir on um, Fresh Meat 2. He got sent home by Nehemiah on the Gauntlet 3. He got sent home by MJ on the Duel 2, um, you know. He got sent home by Wes on the on his first fresh meet. It's like he always gets sent home against these really good competitors. Because I mean, outside he, of fresh he doesn't meat, really he, he yeah he doesn't really have a um, let's see. He's seven eliminations and he's three and four. Oh yeah, I'm looking up his elimination history. Jesus, uh, Wes and Casey, Derek and Nehemiah. Uh, he beat Kylie and Johanna. Beat Nick. Who the fuck is Nick? The duel too. Uh, he was from the world Hollywood. 
I remember. I remember. Had, just, uh, was he, but like his 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 hand was hurt. That's one of those like he showed. That's an example. He's like, oh man, I crushed my hand in this daily, and they're like, all right, you're going. Really, the <laughs> you're gone. Cool. Uh, Jaden Noir beat him. Yeah. Kohada beat him. Oh man, it would be so great to see Kohada come back again too. Just another to actually get like a, a fair chance. He didn't get a fair chance because he got sent home because Casey was pregnant. Like, yeah. what? Like, what are we doing here? Um, God, and y'all didn't have anybody on standby? Jesus, this is exactly what you need him for. But moving on to the elimination, it's something we've seen before. It was cheat codes. Originally, that was supposed to be... Veronica versus Janelle. Or sorry, Tina Jan- versus Janelle. And Jan- Yeah, and Janelle bounced out. So that game was never played. So we bring it back. Do we I was think, kinda... real quick, before you start, do you think Tina would have been able to complete this? Actually, She's yeah. not very tall. She doesn't have long arms. She doesn't have long legs. She's not that tall. Getting up that ramp and then yeah. being like... But a good memory can fix a lot of that. I agree. I, I, I think she could probably could have done it in like two or three turns, but the getting up that ramp, if you don't have like the arms for it or anything like that, that's such a hard thing to do. I think she's fall to I think she falls once or twice and just like yeah I'm not gonna do that again and figures yeah. it out. Um, it's you know, Veronica's a little bit older and may not be in the shape that she once was, but there's a reason why she won so many challenges. Granted, it was a different beast back then, but she can adapt and just her lasting as long as she usually does, which is always surprising. I'm just like, why is she still here? Episode twelve, like what the right. fuck? Um. It's a test to how good she is in the game. <clears throat> and it used to be by her being loud and pushing everything around, and nowadays she's a little bit more sly with it. I'm willing to give her more benefit of the doubt than what it may look no, like fair. she deserves. So, that's fair. I, no, that's, know, that's fair. Yeah, I, I give a little bit of... And I've been hard on Veronica in the past because of her performances and stuff. But, you know, she's aging like a regular woman. Can't be mad. But some people age like Veronica. Some people age like Rachel, who may... I mean, as good as she was, maybe even more dangerous in our days, so. But it's cheat codes, and to be honest, I was glad when they get played the first time. And watching it the second time, it's a memory game. And I do understand you got to have eliminations like this because you have to even out the field somewhat. There's a little conditioning to it, though. They probably had to make, like, 15, 20 runs, like. Right, but if this is, you know, CT versus J, this is a game where J has a shot, you know? As opposed yeah. to a balls in, so I do get it. I don't want to. I don't want to get on them for that. I just want to get on them for. It wasn't that fun to watch. I put eliminations in five tiers from like the oh my god, I want to watch this. I, I could rewatch this all the time. To this is a really good elimination. Yeah, it was okay. To it's not the worst. To terrible. This was it's not the worst. It's in tier four for me. Like there's been. M- much worse eliminations out there. Yeah. Um, and this one is, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's, um, no, you, I wish there right. was more to do. I wish, I wish that they had to like, like you could have made this so much bigger by like having them each have to dig up like three piles to bring up a bag of tiles. And then they had to complete the sequence and then they had to go up and do it. You know, like you could have added more or like something, something, uh, yeah, I, and that's what it just felt like, something. Not that it was the worst, but you got to throw something else in there. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be physical. It could be, you know, an extra carnival game that, you know, it just like today's Daily, this one seemed low energy. Not in low energy, but low effort. Just not a lot of great thought went into this. I thought the setup to it was really nice. Uh, and that's that's really the only good stuff I have to say about this uh, elimination. Wasn't a fan, never need to rewatch this elimination ever again. I will say... The eliminations that have the most simplicity to them tend to be better. I like, 100, 100% agree. And we talked about this before. Some A, a lot yeah. of times, simple is better. Here goes a hole, run through it. Here goes a ball, out of their put it in the hole. Yep. <laughs> Take this out of their hand. Yeah, Sounds good. Sometimes simple is better. I, complicated for, di- for daily challenges are great for eliminations. Tend to keep it more simple. And I'm okay... Also, I would say I would love to see more obstacle course kind of uh, eliminations. You know, um, uh, mini finals or, you know, the one they did in a Fred meet, the uh, the Exiles. I thought, those were, I thought those was great for eliminations. I don't I see why they don't do those more. 
Hey, Exiles this is the elimination. Fantastic. fantastic. I can't believe they don't bring it back more. Here goes the elimination. There's three checkpoints. You got to run. Make these eliminations kind of like mini finals. You got a checkpoint here that's a puzzle. You got one here that's physical. You got one here that's eating. And then you got to make it here. Whoever makes it here the faster doing the checkpoints wins. That would be great for eliminations because also with this episode, the daily ran kind of long. It ate up a large part of the episode. It, and for something it, I didn't think was entertaining, and granted, it probably wasn't a lot of house drama, and, you know, this daily isn't going to take up a lot of time. But if you have a boring thing, not not that trivia is boring, but it can be in this case, but if you have a three-checkpoint elimination, it would be great. I get you don't want to tire these guys out, but I don't know. Maybe... They, you know, maybe production should listen to us every once in a while. Those kind of eliminations, people will love, and it gives people such a great chance. Such a great chance. Put in a big puzzle, put in something eating, put in something physical. Everybody has a chance to show out at some point. I mean, this almost probably would have been better as a daily, to be honest. This would have probably been 100%. better as a daily. Like if, you had, like, like, if you had all, like, all eight of them, and you had partners, all eight of them here, and what you had to do is, like, you had to go into a pit, like a, a water pit, to, like, grab your order you know based on your color and then you had to place it on your board you know it had a number on it so you right. grab whatever and then you do it but then you and your partner have to alternate doing that so you have to trust somebody else is memorizing that you're memorizing that'd be a much cooler daily i feel like um there's nothing wrong with this i mean i think it, i think it was all right i mean it was it was totally fine i mean yeah. it was it, it, it was totally fine it just said this on on a kind of boring episode i just felt like you know, because we can put up with a boring episode with an awesome elimination. An right. awesome elimination at the end. Right. You know, or, or, or a, a high-stakes elimination. You know, it, it can really wipe that out for a lot of us. So, for me, this is one of the few times... And I, don't get me wrong, I love All-Stars, but I just wasn't really super excited about any of it. Um, Adam does get the win. There's really no... I mean, he had a slightly better strategy of just memorizing longer strings. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, gets he was doing shorter strings. That's how he won. Oh, no, no, yeah, he shorter doing, strings. He was doing, like, three, and Brad was trying to do longer, and then, yeah, Brad messed up where he was at and lost it. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like when you think about it, like, what are what do people memorize the most with numbers? It's four and seven, I think, are the number where they memorize the most. You know, I know these aren't numbers, but you could have you could have made them numbers in your head because um, everybody's passcode on their phone more than likely is like four or like your bank, you know, number is four um, and then phone numbers are seven. So it's like those are things that we as humans are programmed to kind of memorize. So it's like if they could have just put that into like a four digit code, they could have broke it down. I would have literally looked at him and been like, all right, I have 20 pieces here. If I make five trips, like I can do four, I can do four each time and I can get it. Like that's like, it should have just been done that way instead of like random. But I mean, Adam got it done. Um, I thought he was going to lose at first because Brad was doing like, some of they were saying he was doing like six, seven at a time. Right, Brad, he looked like he was flying. Come find out he was actually dying. So. He was, it, looked, it looked like he was doing Dance Dance Revolution up there. He was going so fast, dude, with his feet. It was great seeing Brad, uh, Brad complete. Always enjoyed him. Um, always enjoyed watching him. Uh, always a solid guy. I know we're going to see him back. Uh, great guy. I was able to meet him last year, and he was super funny, super entertaining, super uh, kind, um, and affable. So really would love to see him back. I thought Adam did a great job because Brad is not an easy fix, but I don't think this was Brad's season. It was just written all no. over. I don't blame Leroy for not going down. Uh, this looks kind of janky. Yeah. It doesn't speak to my skill set, so I'm not mad at that. Adam gets his star, and he takes Ace's star, which Ace is just like, well, whatever. It was always yours. It was it, always yours. I was just holding it. Facts. And that does for the episode. Um, not a whole lot going on. We did see Brad um, exiting early, uh, but Brad wasn't super high up on the power rankings. Where do you have everybody now? Uh, so top seven shifted on a little bit. Um, Veronica has made her first appearance in here. She is hey. now number seven. Um, Makes sense. I'm she was she... able to talk herself out and was able to maybe secure a little daily. bit of power with Nicole. And, and won a daily. And, and, and she won a daily, and she has a star. So I'm trying to give some credit towards it because, like, outside the only, reason she, the only reason she was the target last week is because Kara wanted Jasmine out. That's all it. That's all it was. Um and so then I have Adam at six, who I think has been, he's been uh teeter totter. He's good one episode, not good the next, but I think 
having a star and wanting to go in and proved himself. I mean, I got him there at six. Nicola's still at five. Um, she had a top four placement today. Uh, she got to make a vote on what was happening. She has a star. Seems really secure in the game. Derek is number four for me. Um, he's won multiple two dailies, and then he he should have potentially maybe won another one, but he's really well protected. People like him. He just got second place on today's daily as well. Um, you know, Derek is one of the reasons why I love seeing All-Stars because this is somebody who may not have been able to shine on the main show, but in this atmosphere, he is performing. He's doing good politically. He's getting decent camera time. It's great just to see some of the other people shine on this series. I mean, outside of like, um, outside of like Wes on All Stars, everybody that's like done really well, it's kind of been like a surprise, you know. Like yes, winning, okay, that came out of nowhere, and then John A. and then we and then we have John A. getting, you know, finishing top three, but also on top of that, um, uh, Kelly Ann finished tied with her in top three, um, you know, and then just on John A. real quick, just yeah. to see her completely rewrite her challenge legacy, right, was amazing. Uh, she was always known to be really, really pretty, kind of a questionable taste in boys, not a great competitor. Good for the challenge, but not a great competitor. And just to see her completely change how her legacy would be perceived is just great. Just great. If she could have ever made a final uh, back in the day, she might be looked at as one of the best competitors of all time. But she just never, she never made a final. Um, but then, then, you know, then you see somebody like MJ wins and it's like, okay. And Janelle gets second place. And then you see Nehemiah also has this resurgence as like a top character. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's really cool to see. And then we see that with like guys like Derek. Now we're seeing, um, Steve comes in at number three for me. He was in the bottom, but him losing and everybody going, we're not throwing you in. Like that's, that's, that's protection. Um, Jay is number two for me again. He's finishing second and third. He's still not been in the bottom. Um, it's going to start hurting him eventually because he needs to go in. Um, yeah. But, I mean, right now he's the most consistent player. And then Kara keeps the number one spot because uh, the two people she voted to go in went in. She was in the top four. Um, I mean. Just solid. No reason to move down. Yeah, and, and, and the I'm not going to lie. The writing on the wall looked like, Oh, Leroy won. He's already saying he's going to go in and take Kara's star and give it Cam. And I was like, oh, they're going to give a hall brawl and they're going to vote in Ryan and Leroy's going to go in. Like, that's what I thought was going to happen. Um, so they didn't. So she's still safe. And I mean, realistically, the only way Kara is, goes out of this game is somebody's got to go down there and take her out themselves. Like, they've got 100%. And all reality, I think Nicole may have a shot if it's the right elimination. Um, uh, and but uh, it would have to be a I don't Nicole, even think a that she could, I don't think Nicole could beat Kara in a hall brawl. I don't think she can beat her in ball. I don't, think, in. I don't think she can beat her. In, I don't think she can beat her in pole wrestle. Um, none of no, that. but but I think something that maybe takes and the thing about it is, Kara can run. She has endurance too, and she has strength. Uh, she's strong in a lot of areas, and you know, may, she might be susceptible in puzzles somewhere. But <laughs> shit, so is Nicole. I'm not saying that she's unbeatable, uh, but like I said before, the place to beat Kara might have to be in the finals. That might, yeah. I, I don't see why people aren't realizing that. Like, it, she's proven she she's been in a shitload of eliminations and she's won most of them. The the place to to maybe have to take her out is the is the finals, and it might she's be only won two finals, and she's she's been in what she's been in like five like, or six. I, th so I think more like... than that. I think that she, she she did like six finals in a row. Let's see. She did. So she did. She cutthroat. Um, mm -hmm. Rivals one. I hate how you're able um, to just to catalog this information. That's off the well, top of your head. Cut, it, it makes me jealous yeah, a little bit. Okay. Well, hang on. And then so <laughs> twenty two on X's. Her and Abram didn't make it. Um, twenty three is Battle of the Seasons. Nope, that was a bad one because of her relationship with Big Easy and everything. Um, then we go to Rivals two. She makes another final there. Um, Let's see. Then she ends up winning on Bloodlines. Let's see. She makes Dirty 30, gets second place. Hold on before. I'm not going to look at you. I saw you <laughs> throw your hands up. Um, makes Dirty 30. Then she makes War of the Worlds 1, War of the Worlds 2. She also was on Vendetta's and Final Reckoning. Mm -hmm. Is that nine? Yep. Nine? There we uh, go. No, eight. Yeah, well, nine it was, it if was, you count Chance versus Stars. 
No, okay, nine with chance versus stars. Okay. Yes, nine with chance, which is also a win too. God. Yeah, yeah. but it was. I mean, yeah. Yes. Super, they, they they should super count impressive. it. They should count it, but they don't. I don't know why people don't count it. It's still. A, I count I mean, it. You you can't tell me these like the the spinoff shows aren't the same as doing a fresh meat season. Like, how is nice. Landon's win on Fresh Meat two not just as good as um, CT and uh, Tony's win on Champs versus Stars? Also, half the cast is newbies. What's the difference? Also, probably anything up until. I would say at least the Gauntlet, like it's kind of in, in the same vein, maybe a little bit more. I'm saying like Gauntlet Two, like Gauntlet yeah. Two, uh, Inferno Two. Anything before that was like, like if you watch the Gauntlet One or Inferno One, like they have teams of like twenty each, <laughs> and then they vote one person in, and everybody else kind of says like some of those people won. They didn't do anything. They were the worst competitor on the team. They never went to elimination, and they got a championship because nine people win a championship. Like. Yeah. Those those early like first six seven eight seasons, I think are less credible than champs versus pros or champs versus stars. Like don't even get me started on battle of sexes. Like, I there's no even eliminations. You just uh, vote people yeah. out. Battle of the sexes had a lot of issues, but I will take no slander for the gauntlet. I thought the gauntlet was official. All right, that's gonna do it. That's gonna oh, do yeah. it for us. Thank you guys all for watching. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter at LWC Podcast. Follow us on Facebook and TikTok at Love Word Challenges. Make sure you listen to Love Word Challenges on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast app. Once again, I am MTV Malik. He is Tyler Louder. This is Love Word Challenges. Good night. The hit list. <laughs> I, you were, I, I told you that you were going to forget it there for a second. I almost like, did. This is, and then you looked at me, and I was like, it's, it's just, I, I haven't updated. <laughs> I have not updated my outro um, notes in such a long time. <laughs>